Hi, this is Jeff Weir, Vice President of Product Management for Security Services at Oracle Cloud. Mahesh got to announce our new cloud security services, but I get the fun part of being able to demo them. So let's imagine we're onboarding a new media customer, and I'm the one helping them secure their OCI environment for the first time. To provide secure access and protect against threats, I'm enabling our new network firewall. This will inspect the internet traffic for the front end compartment. I need to define network firewall policies that specify the type of traffic and the protective action I want the firewall to take. The policies that I'm setting up key on three specification lists. First, an application list that specifies specific ports. Second, a list of URLs. And finally, a list of IPs that define the IP addresses and the ciders I want to allow. Next, I'll configure some firewall policy rules. These rules associate the application, the URL, and the IP parameters to an action. Now in this case, that's going to be intrusion detection. The network firewall is doing two things. It will inspect traffic that matches our rules looking for threats. And meanwhile, the firewall will block all non-matching traffic. Once I've defined our policy, I can create the network firewall. I just need to add a name, and then I select the policy, the virtual cloud network, what we call a VCN, the subnet, and then finally the availability domain. It takes a moment to create our network firewall. Once that is done, our health metrics will appear here in the UI. I want to protect against misconfigurations. So I'm gonna add custom security zones, which is now integrated with CloudGuard to enforce policy on our compartments. From security and identity in the console, we select security zones. I'll create a custom recipe for our backend compartment. I need to add a name and a description. Because this is our backend compartment, I want to lock it down a bit. For example, I want to deny internet traffic and public object storage buckets. I'm only allowing database with backups. And finally, I'm denying various resource associations and movements that could otherwise impact our security posture. Now that I've selected the policies I want, I can hit create and the new recipe is created. And once our recipe is created, it's available and I can go ahead and associate it with one or more of our compartments. It's time to create our new security zone. I select the recipe that I just created and the compartment. I have to add a name and a description. I'll call it backend compartment security zone, and I'll also use that for the description as well. Now our new security zone is being created. See that yellow circle in the upper left? When it's done, that will turn green. And our backend security zone is ready. Next, I'm adding our threat intelligence service. Threat Intel pulls together the latest information about emerging threats from Oracle security teams, the security community, and our partner CrowdStrike. We've integrated this new service with CloudGuard, which uses this threat intelligence feed to monitor logs for suspicious activity. In this case, CloudGuard detects activity from what we believe is a suspicious IP address. We know this because multiple sources from our threat intelligence feed have associated it with malicious activity. This is an indicator that something bad may be happening, so we should investigate it further. Now let's set security team permissions for CloudGuard users. That way they are able to view the types of alerts. The next thing I want to show is CloudGuard's new threat detector. This service is continuously monitoring events, and it uses machine learning to help identify malicious activity. Threat detector maintains resource profiles that include attack sightings and associated risk scores. Like any good cooking show, I've already enabled Threat Detector to baseline our environment. All right, a username Loki requires our attention. Although his score is below our threshold, let's drill into his profile. What you'll notice here is that a couple days ago, Threat Detector identified a brute force attempt. This is not a high severity event, but the system is confident that it's not a false positive. So how does that work? Threat Detector relies on multiple detector models aligned with the MITRE attack techniques. This enables it to identify compromised credentials with high confidence. Drilling down further on this problem, we can see that there's been no resource impact 
and it doesn't require any remediation. However, the IP addresses involved have a number of failed login attempts, and one of the addresses has been identified as a malicious IP. From here, it's easy for analysts to continue to monitor this threat. Thus far, we've seen how OCI security services help protect your cloud infrastructure. I'm gonna switch here to show how we can do the same for Fusion Apps. You'll notice now that we can use Cloud Guard to create a Fusion Apps target. This allows me to monitor our HCM and ERP applications. The Fusion Apps detector recipe contains a list of detector rules that I can easily select by user. Now I'm creating a Fusion Apps target for our customer. I'll choose Fusion Apps as a target type. I'll set the name of the target and then choose the resources I wanna monitor. In this case, I'm choosing login events, HCM cloud sensitive objects, and then role memberships and privileges. Finally, I choose the recipe for that target and create it. Now our security admins can use activity-based alerts to monitor access to sensitive objects within the HCM and ERP applications. I'm gonna drill into some of the problems identified. I wanna take a look at this permission set added to a role. This is a high risk problem. We can view the impacted resources, and if we want to, we can drill down further by clicking on problem history. I know I demonstrate a lot. So to summarize, we looked at how easy it is to set up security for a new customer. I use CloudGuard to monitor the security posture of our infrastructure and our enterprise apps. And at the same time, I use security zones to proactively enforce policies that prevent human error and misconfiguring our cloud infrastructure.